Good morning, church. Happy Easter. My name is Pastor John. My wife and I are the campus pastors at the Nazareth location, as well as Life Church's lead pastor, successor designees. For those of you who are our guests today on Church Online, we want to thank you for choosing to worship with us. We know there are a lot of places you could be today, but we're grateful that you've chosen to be with us this Easter Sunday. I want to encourage you to just enjoy, sit back and enjoy the rest of this service. Before we go any further, let's, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this Easter Sunday, for this Resurrection Sunday. I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak through me a word in season to the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, here's the reality. We're living in a world full of uncertainty where there's very little we can rely on, right? Every day we're confronted with circumstances and situations that can and will cause doubt, confusion, fear. So many, especially over the last few years, have asked the question, where is God? If God is good, why did this happen or why did that happen? There are so many misconceptions of who God is, who Jesus is. But the reality is this, he's not who you think he is. He's not who the world says he is. He's not who Hollywood says he is. He's not who your circumstances say he is. He's so much more. He's greater than the politics. He's greater than the pandemic. He's greater than the economy. He's greater than that bully at school. He's greater than sickness and disease. He's greater than we can think or imagine. He's greater. I love what Psalm 113 in verse four says. Scripture says this, God is higher. In other words, he is greater, greater than anything and anyone outshining everything you can see in the skies. Who can compare with God, our God? You may be thinking to yourself right now, if he's greater than, then why? Why is my family suffering? Why am I struggling with depression and anxiety? Why did I lose my job? Why do my kids not talk to me? Maybe you've been, you've been asking yourself, well, who is this Jesus that everybody's talking about? Because the Jesus I know, didn't show up when I needed him the most. The Jesus I know let my family fall apart. Or maybe you've never heard of this Jesus. Listen, people have been asking these same questions for centuries. You're not alone. Did you hear me? You're not alone. Listen, Jesus is more than a prophet. He's more than a good teacher. He's more than a Jewish king who came to rescue people from the Roman oppression. He's not who you think he is. Each and every one of you watching today are going through something. Whether it's something good or bad, you may have just experienced the birth of a child or a grandchild, or you got a new job, or maybe you just got married. According to the world's standards, you're living your best life, but something is still missing. All the good, your circumstances, isn't scratching the itch in your heart. There are also others of you that are, are really struggling, struggling to move forward from the loss of a loved one. The, the grief is drowning you or you're struggling to overcome an addiction that's literally destroying your life or your finances are so jacked up, you don't know where you're gonna get your next meal or, or how you're gonna pay your rent or mortgage. I mean, life is really, really bad. In other words, you've lost all hope. You've done everything you can, but the, the pain doesn't go away. The anxiety overtakes you and the fear of the future is, is real. Your family is broken. Your heart is broken. You've lost your way. You've lost all you once had. Whether you're living your best life, but, but still empty, or you're broken, hopeless, and lost, I'm talking to you today. I've been praying for you and I want you to know that you matter. Today I'm talking to those of you, the, the empty, the broken, the hopeless, and the lost. I remember when my oldest was about two years old, she started having these crazy night terrors and they got progressively worse over time to the point where the doctors were concerned about her safety sleeping on the second floor. She tried to open windows and other crazy, scary things. These night terrors were horrific. People would say to us, yeah, yeah, our kids have had those, no big deal, until they saw the videos or heard the stories. The doctors told us, ah, she, she'd outgrow them by four years old. Nope, never did. 
they actually got worse to the point where she was having multiple a night. Then they told us, ah, you know, she'll outgrow them by six years old. Nope, they just got worse to the point where Pastor Andrea and I would just sit and we would cry as they were happening because they were, they were that bad. They told us to go get her tonsils out and, and adenoids, have surgery. Yeah, that did nothing. They even had her go through sleep study. You, you'll see a picture of her on the screen in just a moment. They told us she would outgrow them by eight years old. Nope, just got worse. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed and nothing. We had people praying for her and nothing. I remember getting so mad at God after almost five years of watching her suffer, five years of telling us she would get better. Where are you, God? If you're a good God, then where are you? I'm sure every one of you have had those moments in the darkest times of your life, but I'm here to tell you that he's not who you think he is. Jesus does life with the disciples and his other followers for three years. They're, they're eating together, they're drinking together, they're living together, they witness miracle after miracle, and they hear his teaching, they lean into him, they see the world go dark while he hangs on a cross. He told them in Matthew chapter 16 and Mark chapter 9 that he was gonna get crucified and, and he would rise from the dead. But, but when it happens, when the tomb is empty, when all hell breaks loose, when the circumstances of their lives tell them a different story, when they feel empty, broken, hopeless, and lost, they so quickly forget. John chapter 20 verses 11 to 16 says this, now Mary, this is, this is Mary Magdalene, the, the same person that Jesus cast seven demons out in, the, in Mark chapter 16. She was the last one at the cross and the first one at the tomb. Scripture goes on and said, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you, why are you crying? They have, they have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Different commentaries say different things on their assumption on why she didn't recognize him, but the bottom line is she didn't know he was there. Scripture goes on and says, he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out, Rabbi, Rabbi, teacher. I can only imagine what Mary was feeling at that moment. The grief, the loss, the hopelessness, the brokenness. The person she loved, her God, her Savior, literally dies in front of her on the cross. The same guy they all believed would free them from the oppression of the Romans. They had great expectations for him, for how he would fix their lives and their, and their circumstances. We all do that, don't we? We put a lot of expectations on God, and when he doesn't meet them, guess what? We get disappointed. We lose hope. Many times we even turn our backs on God. So he dies and, and she does everything she can to give him a proper burial. She wakes up really early to go visit the tomb to continue to grieve and she shows up and the tomb is empty. Imagine that moment. You've all, you're already been disappointed. Your world is already collapsing. Your dreams and your desires are gone and then it goes from bad to worse. She must have been feeling a whole lot more anger and disappointment. She feels all alone. In other words, where are you, God? Literally, where are you? But in her darkest moments, she wasn't alone. There was another one in the garden. Did you hear what I just said? There was another one in the garden. Don't miss this. When she was at her worst, there was another one there. When she was scared and heartbroken, there was another one there. When she was lonely and sad and feeling abandoned, there was another one there. When she thought it couldn't get any worse, there was another one there. When you feel you have lost all hope, when you feel all alone, abandoned, scared, because you feel like you've lost it all, I'm here to tell you this Easter Sunday, 2023, Three, that there is another one in the garden. The name above all names, the King of Kings, the Lamb of Lambs, the Healer, the Restorer, the Miracle Worker, the Hope for Humanity, that's who's there. That's who Jesus is. 
like Mary, many times, probably more often than not, we don't realize who Jesus really is. What did the Bible say? We just read it a few moments ago. It says that she didn't realize it was Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Listen, he's not who you think he is. Like Mary, we look for him in the dead. In other words, in, in our circumstances, which by the way, always change. In our emotions, which are never a good assessment of reality. We think he's just the gardener, but he's so much more. He's the creator of the garden. He's the creator of the universe. He's the one who bre put breath in our lungs and who divides the spring from the summer and the summer from the fall and the fall from the winter. We may think that he's angry at us or that he's forgotten us that, or that he's far from us, that he could never love us in our mess. But look at Mary. She was possessed by seven demons, but still chosen by Jesus. Even in her doubt, in her lack of faith, in her uncertainty, he was there. Matthew chapter 11, verse 19 says this, the son of man came eating and drinking and they say, here is a glutton, a, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. A friend of sinners, the scripture said. Listen, let me tell you what a, what a sinner is. Someone who's missed the mark who's missed the bullseye, hey, maybe just completely missed the target, but the Bible says Jesus is a friend of sinners. My wife is my best friend. One, one thing I know is that no matter how ugly things may get, how much I may be struggling, and sometimes the, the struggle is real, come on, she'll always be there. All of you have had friends like that. You wanna know who Jesus is, who he really is? He's your friend. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In other words, when you are at your worst, he is at his best. When you are at your weakest, he is at his strongest. When you feel alone, he is right by your side. When you're broken, he puts all the pieces back together. He's not who you think he is. He's your friend and you're never alone. And so in closing, what, is, what does this mean? What does it practically look like to have Jesus as our friend? This is so good and I, I'd encourage you to write them down. A few thoughts, first one is, a friend shows up when others don't. A friend shows up when others don't. Mark chapter 16 verse nine says that Jesus appeared to Mary. In other words, he showed up. He could have gone into the town and made a big spectacle. He could have, poof, popped in on the Jewish Sanhedrin. He could have stood over Pontius Pilate while he was sleeping, breathing on him and said, wake up, sleepyhead, surprise, I'm here. He could have done whatever he wanted, but what he wanted to do was show up in Mary's life. At that moment, in her emptiness, in her brokenness, in her hopelessness and her loss, no one else was there. The, the other disciples were nowhere to be found. They didn't, they didn't show up, but Jesus did. Church, Jesus wants to show up in your life. The first thought, a friend shows up when others don't. Second thought, number two, a friend loves you at your worst. Pastor Andrea and I have been married for 16 years and over these past 16 years, she has seen me at my worst. Dark moments of depression, dark moments of anxiety, dark moments of fear, moments of anger and frustration and disappointment, but she continues to love me. Imagine the love of Jesus. Mark chapter 16 verse nine goes on and says that Jesus appeared first to Mary, the one he cast out seven demons from. He could have appeared to anyone anywhere, but he came to a woman with a broken past, a past that by the world standards disqualified her, but he chose her. He chose her at her worst. John chapter 15 verse 13 says this, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Listen, don't miss this, please. Jesus gave his life for you and for me. And when we were still sinners, he gave it at our worst, not at our best. When we're missing the bullseye, actually when we're not even hitting the dartboard, that's love, that's friendship. A friend shows up, loves you at your worst. And number three, 
Anybody can be there in the good times, but a friend is there at all times. John chapter 20, verse 15 says that when Jesus showed up in the garden, Mary was weeping. Come on. She was doing the ugly cry. I mean, boogers and all. It wasn't her best of moments. See, it's easy to be the guy or the gal that shows up to the party when things are good, works the room, gives some high fives, enjoys the highs of life. It's a different, it's different to be the one that shows up to the party and also shows up at 2 a.m. when all hell is breaking loose, when things aren't so cheery, when things aren't so pretty, when things are scary. Listen, Jesus showed up in Mary's darkest hours. Jesus shows up in your darkest hours. That's what a friend does. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. And finally, number four, a friend knows who you're really called to be, and he calls you up. In other words, a friend knows your heart. They see your past and your emptiness, your hopelessness, your brokenness, and your loneliness. They see past your flaws, your, your mistakes, your, your mess, and, and sees who you really are called to be. John chapter 20, verse 16 says that Jesus called her by name, Mary. Mary, go and tell the disciples I'm alive. See, names mean something. Your identity is rooted in your name. There's a reason why my name is John without an H versus John with an H, because my parents wanted my Colombian heritage to be in my name. John wasn't spelled with an H in those days in Colombia. Also, my full first name is John hyphen David, not Jonathan. There's a reason behind my name. When Jesus calls her by name, he's recognizing the uniqueness of who she is, her identity. Listen, Jesus calls you by name. He knows it. Your identity matters to him. You matter to him. After he calls her name, what does he say to her? He tells her to go, to go do what she's called to do. In other words, your identity is tied to your purpose. Let me say that again. It, your identity is tied to your purpose. God has a purpose for you. Whatever season you find yourself in today, this Easter Sunday, 2023, know that you have a purpose and Jesus is calling you up. He's meeting you right where you're at. He's looking past your past, through your mess, through it all, right to your heart. He's showing up in your moment and he's saying, I've got more for you. See, Mary had a choice that day. She had a choice to believe and to respond, to believe that he is who he says he is and to respond by going. And guess what? Each and every one of you today have that same choice. Are you gonna choose today to believe in Jesus? Are you gonna choose to respond to the call and the purpose that he has in your life? It's my prayer, it's my hope. Would you join me as I pray for you? Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every single person that is watching today or can hear the sound of my voice, if they have not responded to Jesus, if they have not chosen to believe in him as God, as Savior, and have not made him Lord over their lives, I pray that right now they would make that decision wherever they are this Easter Sunday. Let this be the day where they were once destined to hell, but now they're destined to heaven simply by saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for so many lives today that are crossing the line of faith. Heaven is rejoicing for the lives that were once dead and are now alive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, congratulations to all of you who just said yes to Jesus. Best day ever. Pastor Bass will be up on the screen shortly to give you your next steps. But on behalf of my wife and I, and, and of course our founding and lead pastors, Pastors Randy and Maribel, I just wanna tell you, happy Easter. We love you, we love your family. Be blessed, the future continues to be bright. Love you guys.